Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, coming at you from the Knife Center, and welcome to Knife AQ. This is episode number 119. It is the Knife Series, where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull, and this week, we're answering all of your most serious questions. Let's get into it. All right, folks, happy April, everyone, and here's the deal. This series exists on the questions that you folks feed to us in the comments section below. So if you have a question and you want a chance to have it featured in a future episode, drop it in that comment section, please. Uh, first from today comes from Austin Bridge. DCA, I'm about to set off on a long journey to have an audience with the king of a faraway land. I need a gift. What knife would be suitable gift for royalty? Brothers, this is some most serious content Very right serious. here. Very serious. Broach no accusations of Tom Foolery here. Thomas Foolery. Oh, like I've never heard that one before. Yeah. Well, I've never said it, at least. So now I'm not I'm gonna always say it now. Well, Austin, I have a suggestion for you. When you're visiting a monarchy, maybe something like this super tinker with an American flag on it. It's a not so subtle reminder of our uh you know, the superior uh, democratic uh, governmental system, or is perhaps a reminder that the people could rise up. Is that a subversive enough uh, gift for the royals? This would work well, but you know, we're talking royalty here. This is not a particularly expensive knife, I will grant you. So how about this Microtech? Even though this is the Texas flag on this Ultra Tech right here, I think it still fits the bill. Ultra Texas. Ultra Texas. Maybe that's why they did that on these. But these did come from Blade Show Texas. We've got them uh, in stock now. Uh, a uh, double-edged version with a serrated top edge as well as this serrated Tonto, about 295 for these. And it's a Microtech. It's cool. And a little more premium. Certainly more king-like, shall we say. Um, but yeah, maybe it's sort of uh, nudging the monarchy in the right direction, but you know, Strange people like myself lying about distributing cutlery is certainly no basis for a system of government, so your mileage may vary. Next most serious question comes from Sleaze Hand. What's the ideal knife for castration? Well, the most serious answer is, in fact, the spay blade. You can find it on knives like this Case Stockman in pretty much every Stockman pattern out here. This is a new one with a Bird's eye maple black dyed handle covers. Looks cool, 79 bucks for these. And one of the three blades of the Stockman pattern is that spay blade. Designed for Stockman, cattle keepers, for castration for the bulls. It actually exists. You've got a very blunted tip right here essentially with this, uh, this abrupt drop, but a lot of belly. And the idea there is you've got the kind of slicing power that you're going to need, or not necessarily power, but the slicing capabilities you're going to need, but much less likely to uh, stab through and puncture something you don't want to puncture. But is it surgical stainless? Uh, no, but it is true sharp stainless on this particular case. I wanted to give another example of a spay blade. I mean, I always like a chance to, to show a case knife, but this Tim Britton custom bighorn right here, it's about 400 bucks, handmade custom has probably the most beautiful spay blade I've ever seen. This looks so, so great. Uh, BG42 blades, you've got the clip point as well. This is a, uh, a trapper pattern essentially. And man, that spay looks so good. It's got, it's got a little bit of uh, cotton sampler vibes to the, uh, the blade shape as well, uh, just without the, uh, the big ricasso essentially. Doesn't that look great? Use a bighorn on your bighorn. Yes, you could actually. Words of wisdom from Tom Foolery over there. That's, I, I just love that shape. I, I just wanted to share it. It's really cool. All right, next questions, question comes from Damer. Uh, a few days ago, I watched the movie 127 Hours. So I'm wondering what folding knife you would recommend for cutting off your arm or leg in the case of an emergency. Well, that's his problem. He was wandering and he got, he was you know, got, got stuck. Lost. 
Um, one of my, uh, the, the drums I like to beat here and to anyone who will listen, quite frankly, sorry for all of you uh, folks I've imposed my viewpoints on uh, or imposed my, uh, my talking on, I should say. There's certain times when a folding knife is the right tool, but there's many times where a fixed blade is the right tool. And this is one of those situations for the removal of your arm or leg to get you out of being trapped under a boulder. I think that's what happened. Can we not talk about the carcass splitter? The sword carcass splitter. It is built for cleaving and it will cleave very well in this situation, I do think. Leverage might be an issue. Not my problem. Not until it does. <laughs> All right, now we come to the lightning round for our most serious episode today. Mark H. Phelps, uh, most serious question of the day. What is the best fixed blade shape for relieving ingrown toenails? Carcass splitter. Remove the toe, no more problem with the ingrown toenail. Obviously. Uh, next up, Sosa. Imagine spending $600 on a knife to open Amazon packages. Sadly, I don't have to imagine it. I've lived it. And you will continue to do so. Happily. I'll be slicing open my ramen and, and subsisting just so I can have my expensive knives. It's fine. Karthik P says, what's all the hype about donut knives? It's a bunch of empty calories, honestly. Uh, next question, Samuel Smoke. Uh, hey DCA, I bought a Spyderco native. Ah, you must have taken advantage of our, uh, our crew wear exclusives that just came in. Uh, I was super excited to open up the box and start cutting things with it, but mine unfortunately came with a big hole in the blade. It's true. Two holes in the blade, actually, because you need the one for the pivot as well, but that's by design. It's fine. Uh, could you tell me what year the Titanic was built? 1997. The 4CP asks, hey, DAC. Dak. I was wondering, have you ever seen a completely useless knife design? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't buy an Omniblade. Just put that out there. And now we come to our final question of the day, which is our most, most serious question of the day, which comes from Mitch Bolig. Most serious question. Why aren't people sharp enough to get the point of knife humor? You'll have to ask our comments section. I'm sure they've got something to say about this video. That's all we've got for today. Happy April 1st, everybody. Keep sticking around for more cool, actual serious knife content in the coming week and beyond, of course. Let me know what you thought of the answers. Let me know if you want uh, to get a chair. What? We sell knives. At KnifeCenter.com. You can find links for these things in the description. We also have a knife rewards program. It gives you free money to spend on a future knife whenever you purchase a knife, this time and next time. And that's all we've got time for. Oh, today. Thanks for sticking around, folks. I'm David C. Anderson. That's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.